Hey, Navigation Traders. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. I'm actually recording this on Saturday, so it's a day later than, than usual, but spending time with the family, kind of unplugging away from trading for a day is always a good thing. So hope everybody had a great time and can't wait to get back into it Monday. But this is gonna be a shorter video. We only had three days of trading, didn't take any trades on Friday, which was a half day. The markets were open until noon central time. So we'll go ahead and jump into the alerts and check out what we did Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So first trade we did was an opening trade in THO, which is Thor Industries. Now this is a ticker that we don't trade a lot, but this is one that we actually found through the CML option back tester. It's performed really well for the earnings strategy that we teach in our course, the pre-earnings long call. So what we were doing is we were, we were anticipating some upside in the price of the stock and continued expansion in IV leading up to earnings, which, were 11, which are 11.27. Uh, we were only in this trade for one day. So you can see on the 21st, we, we ended up taking this off booked a profit of 200 and I think 220 bucks. If we go to our closed trades, uh, yeah, $220 profit on that trade in just one day. So it worked out very nicely. If we take a look at the charts, we got in here on this day here and the very next day it popped up, give us a chance to exit for about 40% of uh, profit in just one day. So that's uh, that was a great trade. The, uh, the next trade was a closing trade in FL, which is Foot Locker. Again, another symbol that we don't trade too much, but this was a, this was a post earnings uh, short put play where with the, with the stock trading around $40, instead of doing a spread, we, didn't, we wouldn't collect enough credit, so we just did some naked puts. Uh, when Foot Locker announced earnings, the price opened uh, above the expected move. And so one of our favorite post earnings uh, uh, option plays is to sell puts or put spreads so that uh, in anticipation that price is going to stay steady or climb uh, even further than above that expected move. And so if we take a look at Foot Locker, FL, you can see we it spiked up. We actually got in price down here, price went up and then just kind of traded sideways for a few days. Gave us a chance to book a nice profit uh, in just a few days of trading. So another good post earnings uh, short put play there. Next trade was in FXI. So we had price breach our upside short strike. So we did the mechanical thing where we rolled our untested side up closer to price. And in this case, there was only 24 days to expiration. So typically with our you know strangle straddles uncovered uh, option positions, once we get under that 21 days to expiration, we're gonna go ahead and roll that trade to the next expiration cycle. In this case, there's 24 days to expiration. And since we are rolling our puts up, we decided just to go ahead and roll those out to January. And so now we hold the 47 puts and the 48 calls. So there's no reason to, to roll the puts up uh, with, and just hold them for another three days and pay another commission and roll them again. So we just rolled the entire spread out to January. So if we take a look at FXI, you can see, do that big jump up in price there. We, uh, we rolled those out. So anyway, now we've got the short 47 put, 48 call, and price is pretty centered there. So just waiting for some more time to pass and uh, some more theta to, to come out of those options before we take that one off. Next trade was in XRT. So we opened up another strangle in XRT. Uh, this one is still pretty centered. We just put it on, so, so nothing to do here. Just, just waiting for some more time to pass in XRT. If we look at the uh, implied volatility, you can see it's at 62 on the percentile. So still staying nice and high for us, giving us, giving us opportunity to sell some premium at higher prices. Next trade was that uh, the closing trade in THO, I already went over. And then the next one we had a closing trade in EWZ. So uh, implied volatility was still at 65 when we took this off, but we booked a nice profit of over 40% of max profit. 
And if we take a look at EWZ, I think implied volatility has gone up even more. Yeah, so it's at 75 on the percentile now. So uh, early next week, assuming it stays high and doesn't, doesn't collapse, we, we'll look to uh, put on another position in EWZ. And typically in these lower price stocks, you know, under 50 bucks, I typically like to trade the uncovered strangles or straddles as opposed to iron condors because you just don't get enough credit a lot of times to make it worth the transaction costs and everything else that goes along with a four-legged spread. So we'll look to probably put on a, a short strangle or straddle in EWZ early next week, assuming this implied volatility stays nice and high for us. EWZ has been a great trading vehicle for us this year. So we'll go back to the well and try to squeeze some more profit out of it. Next trade was a, a closing adjusting trade in Baidu. So Baidu was one that we put on as an earnings iron condor. And when they announced earnings, it had a pretty decent move down. Uh, we had to close out our untested side. And if we take a look at Baidu, you can see we put this on after earnings announcement, had the big move down, removed the untested side, rolled the uh, the uh, vertical that we kept on and you can see we had this nice move up over the last several days giving us a chance to book that piece for a profit uh, about a week ago we also put on another uh, iron condor to collect some more credit and so we'll, we'll just kind of continue to wait so overall on this trade we are almost back to break even uh, even after that big move after earnings so we're just gonna collect some more uh, theta on this iron condor. Of course, if it breaks through one of our break-evens, we will adjust, but assuming it stays in our range, we'll book this and end up with a potentially a small profit overall in Baidu, even after that big move against us um, in earnings. So that's the power of this uh, disdain mechanical using the adjustment techniques that we teach. And lastly, we did a closing adjusting trade in wheat. So we are holding on to this put vertical, which is part of an iron condor in wheat. There's only two days to expiration, so we we're just waiting for a time where we could potentially get out for a little profit on this. Uh, had to get out, and we eked out a tiny profit uh, on, on this piece. So we, uh, we're still holding a full, another full iron condor in the January cycle. So if you take a look at that, uh, you can see still still very centered, got a little bit of profit in that, not enough to take off. And remember, this is just a continual trade of working our way out of a hole that we originally got in with this massive down move that we had in wheat. So continue to work out of that nicely. Price is staying fairly range bound, giving us that opportunity to collect more credit, book those winners, to, uh, to work our way out. So I, I really, I can't wait till we get out of these, either one of these, uh, with the wheat or the soybeans, it's kind of a similar trade with that major down move that we're continuing to work our way out of. I'm gonna do a full video, kind of showing from beginning to end all the adjustments and everything we did to work our way out. So can't wait to show that. It's gonna be a great learning tool for a lot of, a lot of traders who have not had a, a major move go against them. So you're gonna have those from time to time and the difference between the winning traders and the losing traders are those who understand how to manage out of losing positions. So continuing to work our way out of that one. And those were all the trades for the week. So let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with forward slash ES, the S&P futures. So we've got this long put spread, which is the 2580, 2540 put vertical. And this is one that we're just keeping in our portfolio for some short delta for that protection against the down move. Obviously with the S&Ps continuing to grind higher, that's been a little bit of a drag on our portfolio. But once this market does turn, and it will at some point, I promise, uh, then, then you're gonna see a, a major benefit to keeping that in your portfolio. Next position, Nat Gas. Wow, on Friday on uh, you know, Friday after Thanksgiving. Usually things are pretty quiet, but for whatever, and I haven't even checked to see exactly what the report was or what happened, and it doesn't really matter, but uh, Nat Gas had a huge move down, almost 4.5% on Friday. We've got an iron condor 
in that gas and you can and you can see it's, it's not even, even with that huge move it's not even to the point where we need to adjust yet uh, but kind of took us out of center where we were so needing a little bit of up move in nat gas to benefit that piece if we take a look at ung which is the corresponding etf to get a look at the applied volatility you can see it's at the 67th percentile so even if we don't have to adjust uh nat gas in case you know even if it doesn't breach our downside break even early next week with implied volatility nice and high i will probably put on another iron condor nice and centered around price just to add some more potential profit into that um, with with implied volatility nice and high it uh, continues to be a nice trading vehicle for us soybeans we've got an iron condor here you can see price kind of hanging out in the upper upper end of our range but nothing to do in soybeans yet except for weight i went over wheat we've got adobe so we've got this uh we've got this short call vertical which was part of a an iron condor it has breached our upside break even so we removed our untested side so just needing a little bit of down move in adobe to benefit that piece and then we've also got another full iron condor so collected some more credit there and continuing to work our way out of Adobe, which if you were in that trade, remember it had that huge jump up, uh, not even over earnings, but just during a, uh, uh, on a day where they made a big announcement of some new updates and software that, they've, that they're releasing. So just uh, looking for Adobe to settle down in a nice range, which, which it has uh, since about uh, the beginning of November. So hope to see that continue. We will probably, continue to play this uh, during over the next earning cycle uh, but I'll, I'll give more updates as we get closer to that point nothing else to do in adobe at, to this point dia we've uh, still got this uh, short call vertical which was once part of an iron condor so we need some down movement to to benefit that if we do get a pop-up in implied volatility we'll probably put on another iron condor in dia we're at the 43 level uh, so next week, if we get a little bit of an increase there, we'll probably add to that piece to, to continue to manage our way out of, uh, with DIA. And, oops. Next position, EWW. So we've got a strangle on an EWW. A little bit of profit there, not enough to take off. So we'll continue to wait on that one mentioned FXI, IBM. So we've got this uh, inverted strangle here. And this is one that we're in December. Remember with these uncovered options, uh, anytime you get under that 21 days to expiration, that's when the, excuse me, that's when the gamma or the risk starts to accelerate. So we like to roll these out to the next cycle, which would be January with 55 days. So early next week, we'll look to do that, collect some more credit give ourselves more time to be right in IWM, IBM. And then IWM, which is the small cap index, Russell 2000. We've got an iron condor in here with the, bit, with the move up in IWM. You can see it's kind of in our upper range, but if we get a down move, we'll continue to hold. If it continues higher, we'll, we'll need to make an adjustment in IWM. And then the Qs on Friday, it actually did breach our break even. Uh, but I didn't, I actually, I was trying to get filled on an adjustment, never got filled. So obviously never sent out an alert. And if we get a nice move down in the queues on Monday, uh, then I won't do anything. But if it continues to kind of stay where it is to move higher, we will adjust by removing the untested side. And then we've also got another, uh, we've got another short call vertical here which we will continue to manage, and those are all in December. So if we add another iron condor, we'll look to do that in January with 55 days to expiration. And you can see the implied volatility has really dropped in the queue. So the implied volatility has, has done what we want. However, price has kind of made a pretty big move outside of our range here. So we'll continue to, to manage our way out of that one. And then XOP. Applied volatility staying nice and high in XOP. And so price just kind of hanging out here. Need a little bit of an up move and some more theta decay in XOP to benefit that. And I already mentioned XRT. So that's all our trades. That's all our positions. 
Look forward to another great week of trading starting on Monday. Look forward to talking to you then.